Well, good morning, good people. And how are we doing today? Well, I am glad to hear it, friends. I want to welcome you to worship here at Quaker Town United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Rick, and with me is Pastor Stephen, and on the organ bench is Beth and Neely. In addition, the folks that are gathering are part of our group that will be offering some of the music here today as well. So you'll see Ken Gorm, we got Bill Tascarella, and Patty Wenzel as well, offering up their musical talents today. Now, friends, as always, I want to cover a few announcements, all of which I'm about to say, and more is found as inserts in your bulletin today. So please take these home, take a look at all the great things that are happening here in the life of QMC. First thing you're going to see on that insert is, of course, our attendance from last week. The fruits of labor of all those that signed the pew pads and the ushers getting a good head count. So if you've not done so already, there is a red pew pad to the left or right. Just sign yourself in. That's going to make sure our numbers are accurate and good. As we go further in, friends, a couple things you'll see out in the narthex as you came in. On the long tables there, you'll see the financial statements. Those are our 2023 giving statements. So if you gave to the church, there's going to be a record of that out there. They're organized by last name. So if you're wondering what the order to all that is, just go by last name and you will find your envelope out there. Moving further in, friends, a couple things. If you would like to help the church out in one particular way, we're looking for some folks to be part of our auditing team. Basically, you're going to look at the books of the church and make sure nobody embezzled, we didn't do anything like that, which we didn't, by the way. We're just making sure we dot all our I's and cross off all of our T's and have that as a little fail-safe to make sure we've done our due diligence as a church. So if you would like to be part of that, you can contact myself or Molly Minerick. Both of our contact information is listed there for your convenience. Moving further down, folks, a little reminder for next Sunday. At the end of each month, we take a special offering called QUMC Cares. This goes and partners with many other sources of giving for Quaker Town Cares, helping folks right in our community who are falling on some hard times or crisis. So next Sunday, at the end of both of our services, you'll see members of our missions team, plus some of our kids and youth, helping out with those bright colored pails in the back. So be on the lookout for those next Sunday. In addition, friends, we did have a closure of one of our ministries and activated those four ways that we communicate when we have inclement weather. So just again, a brief reminder, if for some reason we have some bad weather that would cancel any of our missions, ministries, or worship services, we communicate that in four specific ways. We send out a church-wide email, so if you get our emails about the prayer chain or other events, you will see it there as well. It'll be up on our Facebook page plus website. It'll also be on the outgoing voicemail. If you were to call the church directly, you would hear that the church is closed due to two feet of snow that came in because of the blizzard. Please don't come to church and be safe. And we also put it on WFMZ's Channel 69 News, so you will see that as part of the listing of closures under the letter Q for Quaker Town tab. So if you don't hear that we're closed, assume that we're open, and pastor's just being stubborn, and we're going to be here. So... Now, friends, a couple other announcements draw your attention to. We have two special inserts. Here on this yellow paper, it is a reminder about our upcoming women's retreat. If you would like to go to that, we'd love to have you be part of that. It is focusing on the theme about being treasured and how we are treasured by God. And again, two of the folks that are leading that, we have Allison Gorman, Patty Wenzel. Their information is on the form, and the registration for it is on the back. So nice and easy, one-stop shopping for all. The last special insert is a reminder of one of the things we will feature in today's service, which is our Artist of the Month. Some of our faith preschool kids who are here have done some amazing artwork, and while you can see the black and white photocopy of it here, it is on full display in color out in the narthex just next to the main TV out there. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Tammy Swearingen, and I'm also a member of our faith preschool board. Today I'm here to remind you of Christmas Eve when our pastor shared that it's our job to share the light of Christ. And on New Year's Eve, Bill Scott reminded us that it's not just the pastor's job to share other, to lead others to Christ. So today I'm gonna to ask you to do the same. You're gonna share the light of Christ. But how can you do that? Well, we're not asking you to go out on a street corner or go to Nineveh, <laughs> but I'm just asking you to simply Share God's love with some people in our community. And one way to do that by a simple invitation is to pick up a flyer and post it somewhere that you go in um, during your week. This flyer invites people to um, check out our QUMC preschool, which of course is a Christian based and it plants the seeds of God's love in the hearts of little ones. So today, I'm gonna to ask you to post that flyer. You can do it anywhere, your doctor's office, your dentist, your grocery store. Um, there's even a QR code 
um, for people to uh, use with their camera and it'll take them right to the Faith Preschool website. Well, you might ask, how can this help further the cause of Christ? Well, keep in mind, our, our preschool is an outreach ministry. Two of our members that just joined had connections to Faith Preschool. And even longtime member Bill Tascarell tells me every time I see him <clears throat> that the preschool is what brought him to church. So I'll be in the narthex today sharing these, and I hope you'll think of a place where you could take one. If you can't, just leave it on the dash of your car, and then when you walk in someplace, think, oh, that would be a great place to share. And if you know anybody that has a two-, three-, or four-year-old, please share this with them. Remember, it's our job to share the light of Christ. Thank you, Tammy. It's my friends, I wouldn't invite you to join me in this time of gathered worship. Please turn with me to our call to worship and let us seek the Lord together. The Lord has given us a new day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have a fresh opportunity to turn from sin and live in the light. Let us walk with the Lord. God is calling. Let us respond to his call. We are eager to serve the Lord and our neighbor. Amen. Friends, on the next page, you're going to see our opening song today is I Need You. The lyrics are printed there for your convenience. If you want to jump in at any time alongside Ken and Patty, feel free to do so. Let us praise God together.
Thanks be to God. And now, brothers and sisters, let us pray together. Let us join in the opening prayer. As we lay aside all distractions, we give ourselves to you, Lord. Help us leave behind our sinful ways and learn the ways of peace from you. Show us how to be a faithful disciple. Lead us as we make new disciples in your name. May all that we are and all we have bring you glory and honor. Amen. Now, friends, I'd like to invite forward all of our children for this morning's Children's Moment, as well as our Faith Preschool Artist of the Month. Come on up to the steps. Well, good morning. How are we all doing? I'm glad to hear that. So, friends, today, as we talk about some second chances, as we look at the stories today from Jonah, as well as Jesus calling his first disciples, well, I want to talk about something we have in the back of the church as well. So, in the back of the church, we have these fun little bags. These are our little activity bags. And inside them, you're going to find a bunch of different types of coloring books, plus uh, crayons, some books, and all different types of stuff. But at chapel, I also did some of these. We were talking about the story of Noah here in January. And as part of the story and reminding, and my questions in the back, we also have a little coloring page. Have you guys ever colored outside the lines? How do you feel when you color outside the lines? Sad. Sad? How about you, Ben? I don't know. Uh, hi. She was trying to say hi to mom and dad, so I just figured I'd amplify it. Come on. How about you, John? How do you feel if you color outside the lines? Um, good, because I know it was a mistake and I could do better next time. Once again, super smart kids. That's the end of the children's moment. They figured it out. <laughs> but truly, just like you were saying, John, even if we color outside the lines, it's not a big deal, right? It's not like the picture's totally, totally ruined. We can turn it into something really neat, or that's just how it came out. What's up, Ben? Oh, no, my paper's ruined. That's right. It's not like that. And so, but unlike when we color on a page, and it sometimes can be hard to get that mistake off, well... You know, God gives us tons of chances. He gives us a new chance to fix things every new day we get, like today. It's a brand new day, and if we want to fix something, we can. Or if we want to practice our kindness and help our neighbor, if we want to sing nice and loud and praise God, we can do that. We can be kind and hold doors for folks. There's all types of things we can do in our service of God that we can change because we have a new chance to do it today. So, as part of that, we want to also thank God for all these second chances. And so, we're going to be doing a special ministry that we've done here at the church, plus something that I do at chapel with our faith preschool kids. So, we have these rainbow bells. You guys, could you go over and get two bells that you like, and then come back to the steps? Brian, would you mind going getting some too? Go ahead and get any two bells there, right where all the kids are going. That's right. Those are great color choices. When you guys have picked your colors, if you can go ahead and come on back to the steps, we need to show these fine people how this works. Go ahead and head back to the steps. Now, for all of those that may be a little unfamiliar with this music ministry, it's a little different than the, the brass bells that Bethan leads as part of our, our bell choir group over here. This is simple. You don't need meticulous practice. All you need is to know your colors. And even then, we have some that you don't need to know. So, just as an example, since these are a little different than your standard hand dolls, could all of you give me a really, really loud ring? We're going to do it on the count of three, and then I'll call it off. One, two, three. And good. So, folks, again, you ring them like crazy when you see your color on my index card. So, as long as you see one of your colors, if you're doing two different types, or if you got two of the same, well, that's why you go nuts like that. And we're going to be playing to the song today about the old rugged cross. Literally, one of the things we believe so heavily as Christians is the forgiveness we get through Jesus Christ and the cross he died on. So, friends, uh, they're going to need your help because we don't have a full set yet. So, there's plenty more bells up here. If you'd like to come and ring, again, no practice needed. Come on up, stand on the steps of these guys, and let's praise God together. Come on.
So Patty just reminded me of the one thing I have to explain. So for all of our red bell ringers, there are two different types of red bells. So Patty, would you mind holding yours up? So friends, there are two different types of red bells up here that are important. If you have a red bell with black tape, that is not because Pastor Rick broke the stem of that bell and needed to fix it real fast. That is because, like I said, if you happen not seeing the full spectrum of color, if you have a little bit of color blindness, well, this ministry accounts for that because there will be an oval within an oval, and that would be yours. This red with black is always going to be at the bottom, whereas the red without it is always at the top. So just in case. My thanks to all who rang some rainbow bells with us. And as part of this today, Bryn, you did some amazing artwork that's outside in our narthex and is in every single person's bulletin today, too. You guys did some amazing stuff for winter, didn't you? I saw snowmen and tons of decorations out there. You all did a great, great job. So as a part of that, you have our certificate for the Artist of the Month from our church. Let's give her a hand, folks. Congratulations, honey. You can go ahead and head back and sit with mom and dad, okay? They're right there, don't worry. <laughs> now, the hymn of reflection is going to be number 344 in the United Methodist hymnal, Lord, you have come to the lake shore. Um, when you turn to that page, you'll see that it is in Spanish. It says, tu has venido a la orilla. My Spanish is terrible. But that is the, <laughs> that is the uh, correct hymn. You can sing it in English or Spanish as you prefer. And as this is the hymn of reflection, I invite you to remain seated for this one.
Uh, now we come to the point in the service where we have the opportunity to thank God for the blessings he has given us by returning to some of them in the offering. Uh, the plates will be brought forward. You can place your offerings in. If you um, give by direct debit, there's an orange card in the pew. You can place that in the plate, and we will bless that alongside the uh, physical offerings. And if the ushers would like to come forward now. Let's join together now in the prayer of dedication. 
Holy Spirit, we have been given a new opportunity today, a chance to leave behind our past and follow you into the brightest of futures. May the true offering we make today be more than this tithe and gift, but also ourselves. We accept your gift of grace and follow where Christ will lead us. All this we raise up in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the chancel choir will perform their anthem, which says, Ceaseless praise, you are holy. Uh, join together in the prayer for elimination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. First reading today is from Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, and then verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. My brothers and sisters, our gospel lesson today takes us to the gospel of Mark in the first chapter, verses 14 to 20. Here, after John's arrest, Jesus begins his earthly ministry and calls his first disciples. Let us hear about this new opportunity laid at the feet of those first disciples and be in awe. 
And after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Now, as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, Jesus saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired hands and followed him as well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, back in 1934, a brand new board game hit the market that was a little different than many of its contemporaries at the time. Usually, a board game involved just following a nice set of instructions, getting to an end objective, and trying to follow those rules very stringently. Well, this game tempted you to do something that you were taught not to do as a kid. Instead, you were, the objective, while still trying to get to the end, also involved the fun activity of bumping your opponents out of the way and saying the word sorry in the most sarcastic way you possibly could because now it was fun to bump them off the table and send them back to start because in this game called sorry, you did just that. If you land on their space, goodbye, friend. Goodbye, brother. I'll see you next time. It was fun. And so this game was introduced, and much to the teaching at any home, sorry meant something a little different when you broke out that game. But friends, today we're not talking about a sarcastic sorry at a board game with some friends and loved ones. Today we're talking about what it means to have a second chance with God. That as we hear in today's stories, that of the prophet Jonah and the gospel writer Mark, we have an opportunity to make a fresh start with God. Take him up on his offering of grace and forgiveness and follow him to new and unexplored places. Places that we probably don't feel qualified for or qualified to go. But yet, he calls and invites us to follow him. So friends, today, let us repent of our sin and follow in the new and glorious opportunities God has laid right at our feet on this new day. Let's dive into God's Word and see what he has in store for us. So friends, if you're not familiar with the prophet Jonah, Jonah has an incredible story. Many of us may know it from Sunday school or its various depictions of Jonah being swallowed up by some great fish or whale, but here we hear an action towards the end of this very short book. For here, Jonah has eventually now made it to the great city of Nineveh. He's tried to resist the whole way ever since God told him to go to Nineveh and proclaim this news. He's been going any other direction than this city, but now he is finally there. He has arrived, and he has done what God had commanded him to do, to tell this city that in 40 days you will be destroyed. And so Jonah delivers the news, as we heard Pastor Stephen read for us. He takes about a day's journey, gets mostly to the heart of the city, and proclaims this word. And despite what you may think when you tell a group of people, hey, God's going to destroy you, you might think they're going to try and hurt Jonah or kick him out, but they do something entirely unexpected. A decree comes forth from the king that every man, woman, child, and every livestock in that city will be adorned with sackcloth in an attempt to show their repentance from their sin. Now, why this is wild in the midst of Jonah's story is because historically the Ninevites were a very violent people. They participated in many wars, including a couple skirmishes with Israel itself. And so Jonah going there is because, well, these are former enemies. What in the world are you sending me here for, God? And of all people to not respond in violence, but peace, it would be the farthest idea in Jonah's head that the Ninevans would react like this. But they repent. And the most wild thing for this point in Jewish history appears. This line that may have just easily grazed by us because we're used to it in our dealings with God, but new in the time of Jonah. 
It was verse 10, as Pastor Stephen read it for us, that when God saw what the Ninevites had done, how they had turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is groundbreaking because, again, friends, for the understanding of God prior, if God said he was going to do something, it was going to happen. Now, all of a sudden, God changes his mind. Now, we change our minds all the time, right, friends? We, we drive up to our favorite Mexican restaurant. We order some tacos. We get there and say, you know what? I really want spaghetti. And they look at you and say, not here. <laughs> you're not ordering it here. That's, that's the Italian restaurant next door, friend, but you're, you're here now. What would you like? So, friends, truly, if we think about it, we change our minds all the time. We, we change our mind about what we want to eat, what we want to wear, what we, what, do we want some creamer in our coffee or just take it as it is? We change our minds, but so rarely do we consider, how does God change his mind? How does, how does that work when we fully cement this idea that God is unchanging except when it involves our forgiveness, right? Then God can change his mind whenever he pleases. So for Jonah to hear this, former enemies of Israel, these violent group of people, of all people then to be forgiven, Jonah just can't stand. And that's a sermon for another day about the prophet Jonah and his response to this act of God's forgiveness and mercy. But the Ninevites repent, and God sees it. And instead of bringing calamity like he had promised through his prophet, he decides not to do it. And that city stood that day. This then is an incredible reminder about how God can extend that, extend that mercy even to us. For any of us who have sinned, God can forgive just like this. But then, friends, what to do with that level of forgiveness? We can receive it, but it's a whole other thing to say, okay, I can take it, but how do I take it to people? As Tammy had said in her announcement at the beginning of service, you know, it's on all of us to take the gospel out into the world and proclaim it to people. So, so what do we do with it then? Well, as the gospel writer Mark was opening his narrative about the good news of Jesus Christ, it accounts for the groundwork that had happened before and then the very first actions of Jesus' ministry. Our reading of it in verse 14 picks up with the arrest of John the Baptist. We know, of course, from Advent that John's birth was one of the two incredible births that happened around that first Christmas, that he was destined to pave the way for the Messiah. He was going forth to tell the people to repent, to turn from their ways, to draw close to God because the kingdom was coming, as was the Messiah. And so John had been saying all of this throughout his time of calling the people. They should repent. They should be baptized in that act of repentance. They should turn from their ways. That wrath is coming. And so when Jesus arrives on the scene and begins to proclaim the good news, it is continuing down that path of inviting folks to something new. To not keep on living in that cycle of sin where they sin, feel bad, but can't escape it. And so they sin again, they feel bad, and it just keeps on going around like an endless circle. Here, Jesus, as he begins his ministry, he finds his first disciples. And you'd think, okay, he's going to need people that can speak well, that are comfortable in front of crowds, that are very skilled in their knowledge of the Bible. They, they need to know a lot of stuff. So, of course, he went to the synagogues and the best, you know, rabbinic schools of his day, right? No. He finds fishermen who, of course, as we all know, fishermen never would tell lies or exaggerate a tale or improperly measure a fish. He goes and finds some humble fishermen who are literally in the midst of preparing what they are, they're repairing their nets, casting things off, bringing things in. They're working right now, and Jesus walks by to an unsuspecting Simon and Andrew and tells them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of people. Now, again, friends, we have to understand how life-changing this is because they are being asked to do something that they are not prepared for. This is not what their father, their uncles, the rest of their family, who are probably likewise generational fishermen by this Sea of Galilee, 
they know how to mend a net. They know how to tie off a hook. They know how to do these things. But to be asked, we need you to do something different, Simon. I need you to do something different, Andrew. You're going to come with me, and I'm going to train you in everything you need to know. I'm going to give you the good news. You're going to sit with me and learn the mysteries of the gospel. You're going to be shown things that you never thought were possible, miracles performed in front of your eyes, and mysteries that you're going to still be having a hard time understanding even when we have a Q&A session when the crowds are gone. He invites them to this. And incredibly surprising that they all say yes. And after he walks down a little further, likewise he sees John and James, the sons of Zebedee, literally working with their father in their boat. And he says, come and follow me. And they likewise leave their father in the boat, all the work that they've probably known the entirety of their lives to follow this man in a brand new venture. And friends, while it may not be as dramatic as having Jesus literally walk by our place of business and say, you're done, put in your notice, you're following me now. This is what every brand new day is for us. As this sun is beaming in through these windows, glistening off the snow outside, this is the fresh opportunity. This is that reminder that what we are called to do, God bless you, is to take part in this good news spreading. We're to go forth and tell people that, hey, God has forgiven others. When he promised calamity, he still chose to forgive when he saw repentance. Would you come with me and receive his forgiveness too? We can marvel at them and say, listen, I wasn't qualified either. I wasn't the super professionally trained individual that said, yes, I'll clearly be a good public speaker and do all this mission work and go out there and take ridicule on the chin. Friends, this is what it is to be called. It's not because we were perfect at the beginning of the calling, but that Christ made these individuals, these humble fishermen, into the apostles that we still learn about their faith to this day. So friends, we have a fresh opportunity right here, right now. This new day we've been given that we might choose to draw a little bit closer to God to marvel at the ways we've been personally forgiven of those sins in the past, to make a fresh confession and repent of those sins, and to follow Jesus anew. So friends, as we continue on these early weeks of this new year, may it truly be the start of something new. Deepen your faith with Jesus Christ. Repent of those sins that still need some repenting. And let us jointly come together and serve our Lord and our neighbor together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, once more, friends, I'm going to turn things over to our contemporary group as we sing our closing song, befitting probably the very same question that Simon, Andrew, James, or John asked themselves, who am I? I'll turn things over. And you're welcome to stand this time to sing. Let's do that. <laughs>
Friends, thanks be to God. And as we say goodbye for now, please go forth with this blessing. Heavenly Father, I bless each and every one of my brothers and sisters. Help us then, Lord, this week to see those new and fresh opportunities that you lay before us, Lord, and let us take it up with a resounding yes. We hear your call and we follow you. So help us in all we do this week, our witness and our very lives, Lord. For this we ask in your precious and holy name and all God's people said, Amen. go in peace, church.